Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And have you ever wondered which tanks are making their owners the most money? Well, fortunately, now Tomato GG is getting economical data from players who upload their games to the awesome service. Now we can find out. And so, without further ado, let's find out which vehicles are making their owners the most profit in every single game. Well, it's actually the ISU 130, although only 230 battles have been played with that very rare vehicle at least with regards to the European server. The next in line is actually the EBR-75, a wheeled vehicle that hasn't been sold in the shop for a good while. And so that can actually be a little bit controversial that this is the most profitable vehicle. But when you think about it, there are many reasons as to why this is the most profitable tank. Firstly, it gets ammunition that is quite cheap, uh, especially on its standard rounds. And it doesn't really gain that much advantage when it goes from its 100 and what is it, 75 millimeters of standard pen up to its 220 millimeters of premium pen. Also, in addition to that, its high explosive rounds are also really good as well. And when you penetrate with those high explosive rounds, you are doing what is it, like 260 damage a shot or something like that. Absolutely monstrous. Uh, another reason why this vehicle is doing well is because it gets very weird matchmaking where uh, it can only get matched up against other wheeled vehicles. So, for example, this Lynx. Uh, and the Lynx is not a very strong tank, and it doesn't really have that many good, uh, probably experienced players playing in the Lynx. It's probably one of the first tanks that a lot of people end up getting. All right, looks like I have claimed the hill for the team. So that's always a good way to start on mines. Always nice when you're literally the fastest tank at tier 8, right? For taking locations like this. Alright, I'd quite like to go up to where that ELC is so I can be able to get some shots across. But um, when I got the FP4202, I feel like I've also got to try and just get a little bit of a cheeky shot in there. A quick reload. A quick reload. And it begins Quacky Baby's journey of playing live on YouTube for the most profitable tanks. I've got to be careful here, though. like Because while I do have quite a lot of sneaky power, I also have not got very many hit points. Wow, I didn't actually get spotted there. Oh, I did. Just about. I'm not sure if that was a proxy spot from the Defender or from the FV4202 or even from the Bat Chat on the side. But right now, it's just about being this, this one-two punch. What I love about this vehicle is just delivering those shells so reliably. And that's it. I'm not actually sure if I even took the vision system here if I took my damagey build. I think I might have taken a damagey build. I play this thing a lot in Frontline. It actually has my most skilled crew inside the game. I've got a Santa Claus. Although Santa Claus, to be fair, he gets two zero skills uh, for free. But he has eight skills. Eight skills, ladies and gents. It's pretty outrageous stuff. All right, so good start for the EBR. Hopefully, we can continue to just try and keep spotting people here. Getting a few shots in, but I've got to be careful as well. I keep getting spotted. Oh, wow, the Scorpion actually just hit one of my wheels. That was a good shot. Not only did he hit my wheel, but he also damaged my tank. A lot of people think, ah, oh, the magical wheels on this vehicle provide so much protection. But it's just because the hull is actually a pretty weird shape. And so you're kind of just missing, actually, the hull of the tank quite a lot. Wow, games are fast today, ladies and gents. It is Saturday. It is hot outside, I can tell you. It is hot outside. The tensions are probably going to be uh, rising on the uh, World of Tanks battlefield as well. Well, it looks like my Boras just farmed up the uh, the Tiger II, who looked to be FK. I think I just got proxy spotted by the T30. I did. Well, this is a really annoying game. All three of these players are just sitting in such irritating locations for me. But I can't really do much. But I've only done a thousand damage this game. Maybe I should just go and try and raid the western flank against the STRV. This is, this is pretty cheeky. Uh, do you think we can jump off this? I think it should be safe. EBRs can usually fly. I mean, I lost a few hit points, but at least it looks cool for YouTube, right? Uh, my teeth uh, my teeth might have lost a few crew. Or even my crew might have lost a few teeth with that kind of driving. Oh, man, I believe I can fly literally EBR style, huh? All right, STRV, how you doing? Oof, how do I miss? Get him once there, though. Is this a mill going to aim at me or not? I'm going to go behind enemy lines, so to say. This is kind of the place that you need to do more in your EBR. Not what I was just doing, really. Um, I was kind of messing about, sitting up on the hill, trying to play as if I was like a medium. Oh, Scorpion G! He just hits me twice in this game. I got killed by Enraged Ducky. Oh, well, rip me. Anyway, 
2,000 combined and a couple of kills. Definitely not the best result in World of Tanks, but it will have to do. All right, what is the next most profitable tank? Well, it's actually the Peregrine. But again, like the ISU 130, that's just a reskinned version of the IS-3A, which definitely is doing very well with regards to its profitability, but not nearly as well as the other vehicles on this list. Okay, the next tank that I'm going to play is going to be the Škoda T-56. So this is the Tier 8 Czechoslovakian heavy tank, and it is very profitable at 47,000 credits per game on average for its owners. And the reason why the Škoda T-56 is doing well um, I think it would probably be better to ask, like, why is it not doing well? Yeah, I'm not, not bad. 2,200 combined there for the EBR and a nice, fast, easy win. So the Škoda T-56 is just outrageous in pretty much every single way in World of Tanks. It has a 130mm autoloader that, just like the EBR, fires two shots. Hmm, are you noticing that? Two shots autoloaders are very powerful inside World of Tanks. And uh, when you hit for 460 with each shell, oh, it can be meaty. Oh, what a shame that we didn't have this vehicle on mines and had the EBR on this map, because this would be a great map for a light tank. So I've got two builds for the Škoda. One uses a turbo and the other uses a durability device. I'm going to go for the durability device on this map. And um, yeah, this could just be an absolute barn stomper of a fight in the center. I'm against a, an Object 252U, a Carnarvon and a VK. The Carnarvon can be a real pain in the, uh, in the, in the back for this vehicle. Uh, the 252U, I can actually, if I can snipe accurately, which is why I'm using an aiming device on this tank, I should be able to handle them. Uh, you might be no thinking like, QB, why no vert stabs on this tank? Because I just don't think this tank really needs vert stabs. I think the aiming device on this vehicle pays off so much more. Because one of the, this vehicle's major weaknesses is its accuracy. And so with the bounty aiming device, you massively improve the accuracy, which means that you can snipe at decent distances. And as long as you've got a like an extra half a second or a second to aim, which is probably what you'll lose from the vert stabs, then I think it's totally worth it. Another thing to mention about this vehicle is because while its intra clip is three and a half seconds, which is definitely not short, again, I don't feel like you're getting the benefit from your traditional auto loader, like an EBR, for example, with that short intra clip reload, where you really do get the benefit from the vert stabs because then you can um, keep, uh, you can fire your second shot as accurate as you did the first. Alrighty then, Škoda, time to shine. This thing is an absolute beast. But I always get nervous when I play it because it is such a beast that I feel like I have to do really well when I play it. Alright, so we've got an Iron Arnie there. A 46, a 48, sorry, who has a huge weak point on top of their vehicle. I should have fired there. That's a misplay by me. Gotta be careful though. It looks like that Carnarvon and the Iron Arnie fired. So let's get forwards. I don't think I can pen this Carnarvon. I can definitely pen the Iron Arnie's weak point. Not if this uh, TNH gets in my way, but oh well. Oh no, I really want to be on the inside, but I can't really barge this TNH. He's doing his thing, and he's also doing damage as well, so I've got to respect him and just let him do his thing. Okay, I think this AT-15 is just going to come straight around the corner and just go for it. Uh, I hate just being a spectator in this kind of a situation, but I'm also not the kind of player who wants to just shove my allies out the way. He says as he drives forwards, nice shot. As I just drive in front of the AT-15. Although I'm not sure the AT-15 can really complain if I want to be able to just get a shot in. So interestingly enough, their 252U has actually gone up on the high ground. Is he going to try and push or not? Um, I don't think he will. I'm going to change my angle. And I'm actually going to go to where this Borsig is. So I can be able to get a bit of a, a crossfire on those players here. Maybe this will also allow me to get the AC-48. This vehicle, I believe, has 8 degrees of gun depression. So it's not bad at all. And that should hopefully give me the flexibility when I am fully aimed and this guy crests and give me his belly to put around him. And 469. Yeah, this tank hits real hard. Is that another 48 that's going to drive? There's a lot of French autoloaders around at the moment because of the top of the tree. Uh, i got to be careful with getting shot in the side here, but also I still want to get some shots in. I haven't reloaded. I've still got one left. Oh, that looks juicy. Nice stock turret there. Or is that not a stock turret? I've I mean, got me thinking now. I think the VK just gets a weird turret. No, actually, I think that is a stock turret. It looks like a Tiger II. But then again, when you think about it, the VK is pretty much just like a stock Tiger II within that regard. All right, well, we find out that there's a Borask out there, but luckily my armor keeps me alive. Um, I don't think that that Borask might have a second one, but right now I'm feeling a little bit greedy and I want to kind of go for this, this VK right now. It looks like he's delicious. Delicious, I tell you. If there's one bad thing about this vehicle, however, it's that its penetration is not excellent. So you quite often find yourself having to fire gold 
Um, but when you're hitting for 460, do you even really care if you're firing that many gold rounds? I mean, you do, because that's the whole reason why you're playing these kind of tanks, is for profitability, right? Alright, that Carnarvon is doing a great job in holding that position. I think he's pre-aimed for me. I think the Borask is still spotting me out on the side, because that Carnarvon was pre-aimed as I came around the corner. But he's farming up all my friends, so maybe I've just got to take a risk here against the Carnarvon anyway. No, I got spotted again. It's so bait. He's just going to shoot me in the lower plate for uh, a good amount. Oh, the Udez is going to keep going around the corner. All right, what can I do here? Um, I don't think I can push the uh, the west because of that Borask and the SU. I don't think their Borask can really push. I think the SU-101 will do a good job of holding that flank. So what I think I'll do instead is just try and go over here and try and provide some, maybe some crossfire on the west. Try and see how the battle goes from that perspective. So this vehicle, it just has it all, really. I would be as bold as to say that this is the best tier 8 premium tank in the game, pretty much bar none. Maybe the SU over reverses? I don't think he will. That's that's hopeful thinking. Dang, that Borask actually got spotted as soon as I... Um... Holy moly, the the Carnarvon just lost all his hit points. I think I think he's absolutely goofed. I lost this Borsig for some help then. Maybe I can go after this Carnarvon. I'm actually going to switch to gold here because I think... It... Oh, no, I'm not. I want to just make sure I got that Carnarvon there, but oh, what are you doing, sir? I'll wait for your belly again, I think. Wait. Carnarvon's going to come for me. I might be able to get an HE shell on him. Oh, no! No, I don't probably need this HE. I'll save it for later on. I'll go for gold here. Oh, wow! Carnarvon right through the side of my turret because I didn't realize about this AT-15. That's a misplay by me. Probably should have gone for the Carnarvon there. This game is really tight right now. I was going to push across there, but unfortunately they did find me. I wonder if I can sneak across this way. T44 is on 800 hit points, so he's not quite a two-shot. But oh my word, my team is actually pushing west. Oh dear, that's not good. That means I have to maybe counter-push here. But if the Carnarvon sees my friends over here, he'll probably come across. Dang, I feel really slow right now in this vehicle. Oh, Borsig, please get yourself out of the way. Thank you. And here we go, the aiming device paying... Absolute dividends there. Let's go as we finish off that sneaky Borask. And hopefully that shows you why I think that the aiming device is just so much better than vert stabs on this tank. Although some people would go, well, you could just drop vents. But remember, vents are 3% accuracy as well, so they're getting half the value of the aiming device. I reckon this Carnarvon's still aiming for me. i got to try and get rid of him quickly now, otherwise the game's going to start to snowball in favor of the enemy team. Well, when, where would he go? Oh, no! Maybe I get a second. Nice. Knocked out his engine. All right, the Carnarvon didn't actually come back for me. This is a tight game. All right, I've crippled the T-44. EBR is doing sneaky things. I think we have to go after the T-44 in the center right now. He's got Scorpion on the high ground. Can I get the guy to panic? We can. Nice. I'll say thank you to my Sears 52 list. I have to go forward to say thank you to him. Oh, this is dedicated. He's actually running away from me. He's running away from my thank you. Okay, so we've got a bit of a problem here. And that is that they've taken the whole of the east. That Borask. I think the Borask will maybe be coming in. Maybe I can get a bit of a sneaky play on them. I wonder what my shell velocity on my HE is. It's actually less than my AP. So I'm actually going to go for the AP here. I'm going to go for a little bit of a spot from this window. I just need them to make a mistake, but I'm trying to spot two of the most sneaky tanks. And their EBR actually has four kills, so what a gamer. What a gamer. Got to be careful here. If I get spotted out, I could lose all my hit points. Oh, there he is. Hmm. Is it just me and a Skoda? I've got to go and have a peek, see if I can catch him. Do I spot him? Oh, it's a disaster. I'm going to switch. I'm going to reload again. Sorry, not switch. I was thinking like switch to an HE. Hmm. Well, their EBR came in a bit greedy there. If I sit here, I'm going to get rt I've got 72 seconds cooldown on my medkit. I'll just hang here for a second. This is actually pretty tense. I kind of need them to cap. This is a very slow game for a YouTube video. Huh. 
All right. All right. I'm gonna turn my volume up a little bit. I've got the AC on right now. It's the first hot day of the year. A little too spicy to be able to make live YouTube videos in like 30 degrees, dude. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs, EBR spotted me. And now, it is just Uncle Scrubby Baby versus the world. I have to rush these guys. Unfortunately, the Ho-Ri-2 is very healthy. So what I have to do is somehow avoid the Ho-Ri-2 and the EBR who will have my my butt. And I have to try and catch this poor ass. So right now, it's just all about aggression. Unfortunately, the Ho-Ri-2 has found me and the EBR is behind me. EBR bounces and shot. Oh, come on! That's it, boys and girls. I needed to hit that shell. That's it. Nothing I can do here. Might as well just try and get one more shot in before I die. As I hit a wall. Ah, that's frustrating. Everyone's got gold. Everyone's hitting their gold. Well played. Maybe I can run away from the Vorask. Nah, it's not going to happen. Well, GG, well played. Obviously a good player here if he was able to get champion rank. And he's got 10,000 war gaming rating. Well done to the Borask, well played. Um, yeah, just not really too much I could do here. Uh, 3,000 damage is honestly very disappointing for me. I felt like I I got caught too long uh, with the vision of the Borask. And I got caught for too long with the Carnarvon. At the end of the game, I wish I'd maybe just ignored the EBR and gone straight for the Borask. Good player. Well done to the Borask. He's actually not got that rating. Who killed me? Was it the EBR who killed me? I'm so confused. I thought he said he had 10,000 Wargaming rating. He doesn't have 10,000 Wargaming rating. I'm confused now. Who was it who had the 10,000 Wargaming rating? It wasn't the ho -Ri one that's for sure. Ah, well, GG, well played. I could win my fight in the town, but I just didn't do too well against that EBR. Well played, well played. Alrighty then, cool. So that was the Shigoda T56. Uh, let's move on. Now... The next most profitable tank, this might be a surprise to some of you, is the Basante. Before we play the Basante, though, I want to highlight just how much the Skoda is spending on ammunition compared to the EBR. One of the reasons why the EBR is so profitable is because its owners are only spending 8,500 credits per game. Whereas on the Skoda T56, they're spending 26,000 credits per game. Monstrous stuff there. All right, cool. So, Basante. So, this is the Tier 8 Italian auto-reloading heavy tank. And I think it's doing great because... It's just very powerful. This is a very underrated tank. And also, I think that a lot of people make the standard rounds work a lot more on this vehicle. And they aren't just spamming gold left, right, and center. Uh, because of its awkward switch between its its shells, right? Uh, all right, I'm going to take a Basante. I'm going to go and push across towards this northern place and just use my 10 degrees of gun depression. So this tank has a bad name amongst a lot of players. I think it's kind of like a Marmite tank. You either love it or you hate it. And I'm firmly in the love it tank. I think it's fabulous. I think as long as you don't just waste all of your rounds and you realize that its rounds are a resource and that as soon as you um, have lost those rounds that you're in a, a big deficit, that it's a very strong vehicle. So, what you, as I said, what you really don't want to do on this vehicle is just waste those rounds because as soon as you have, you will be behind on ammunition and then you'll never really catch up because the third round takes so long to reload um, so you kind of want to only be using this tank as like a single shot reload, single shot reload, single shot reload, unless you know you've got a very long time to be able to fully recover your magazine. A lot of people also, if you're watching Italian auto reloaders for the first time, are confused about this, but this is like um, an interrupt mechanic. So if I fire now, I lose all of this progress and I lose this shell, but then I get my lost progress as compensation towards the reload. And you can just see how much faster that third shell reloads on this tank. Really, as I said, and you can't say this enough in, in auto-reloaders, um, the Italian ones especially, that the deeper you go into the mag, it's just... You really are crippling yourself for your ability to be able to carry the rest of the game. Alright, so we've got a lot of tanks with a lot of gun depression. All of our vehicles have got 10 degrees, whereas the enemy team have got a lot less in the form of the IS-5 and the Borasks. I guess as long as their Borasks don't win the East, we should be quite okay to be able to uh, to do this. This is very awkward right now. Everybody wants to just chill. Um, I think I'm just going to push into the dip here. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to push into the dip. I'm definitely not going to stop in front of this guy. Uh, I think 10 degrees of gun depression. Let's go. Let's go 10 degrees of gun depression. I should be able to get 
these guys, hopefully. And boom, baby. Dang, he actually caught me. I wish I'd used a durability device on this map. Nice shot by the AMBT. I didn't realize it was sticking so far up there. I gotta watch out for my TDs at the back as well. Um, Panther 88. All right, well, I guess I'll flank around if the Centurion 51 wants to come sit behind me. I guess I'll continue my flanking play. Some Borasks down below. This guy's only got like six degrees of gun depression, so this should be really hard for him on this ridge. And it should be very easy for me on this ridge. So there goes his repair kit. All right, I'm clearly not going to tunnel vision and just keep going after that guy. I've got to go after these. I also really don't want to fire right now. Now I do. So you see how I held that shot? That is what you must do in your Basante. If you don't, you're going to regret your choices with your damage per minute. But of course, if you do have an opportunity to get multiple shells off, you probably should get multiple shells as well. I don't know where that Borask is going. I'm just going to let the Borask do his thing, I guess. Or should I? Yeah, I should. I think he's going to get caught. All right, got to be careful with the TDs, as I said, at the back of the map. They will mess me up good and proper. That 48 is them. I don't think he'll be able to depress his gun enough. If that AMBT falls back any further, I actually have the the front position. He's trying to protect his weak point, which is valiant. It didn't work out. I'm actually going to go and see if I can get this Borask here. Try and help this Type 59. Let the Type 59 know that I'm going to help him. And wow, that's unfortunate. Now, what do I do right now? Do I hold? A lot of people would have fired. I probably should have fired. Nah, I should have fired. Now I've just wasted my time. I could have got an extra free shot into the Borask. So that's where, like, I should have fired. And then I should have got my DPM lower because then I could have recovered it and then gone after these guys, right? So sometimes I thought the Borask was going to drive away from me rather than actually go towards me there. Wow, that was a really clutch shot over that ridge. And I didn't realize how much the Basante's front sticks up. That's a little awkward. Okay, he's actually fired both shells. But that's okay, because hopefully we can get the Panther 88. Okay, I think I've got to just try and keep the pressure up against these players here. Does he think I'm reloading? He doesn't care. This guy's super aggressive. All money here. Oh, hello, AC-48. Nice. So I'm just going to keep firing one by one by one and just try to control the situation the best I can. Because if I get rushed, then yeah, you're going to really want to have those rounds. Plus, as we just saw with the... As we just saw, now I can pressure him. You know what? He's only got one left. I think I... Oh, I can't trade with the artillery stun there. If I had a med kit, I would have gone in. I've got to be careful, though, because we're slowly losing this. No! Ita bloody Italian stun! Okay, I'm tilting out. No doubt. I got tilted there by that stun and that miss on the TS-54. Looks like it's a good player playing a good game, and my team seem to have just left right now, which is very upsetting for me. I don't understand why these guys are just going over there, but we need some flanking play in here. Maybe I can still get this guy if I can get him to make a mistake. He's very confident. He's a good player. He's doing a good job. Unfortunately, he's got two shells, so I've got to be careful here. He wants to shoot me. He's just waiting for the two shells, but maybe my, maybe my team can have some fun. Uh-oh. Is he going to have to push forwards, or is he going to have to fall back for that guy? Hmm. Gosh, I really hate losing games against these players right now. Seems to want it. He wants it. He's fired one, but he's got a five-second reload here. Nice. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Got the pressure up on him now. Artillery's got the pressure up on me. Oh, come on, Vasante! I just had so many nice things to say about you, and now you're trolling me. This guy's in between a rock and a hard place right now. With these 75. Okay, I didn't see the Borask behind me. Is that the Borask that I didn't fire at earlier? Oh! Boys and girls, I can't believe the Basante's trolling me so much today. I, 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 I could have won this game if I'd played better. I just, I just fumbled. I fumbled, boys and girls. I'm not gonna lie. Whatever, man. Can I blame that it's too hot? I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. Just blame everything apart from the fact that I just fired poorly this game. Oh, well, my bad. I usually do much better in the Basante, but it doesn't look like it's my day for the Basante today. Okay, I've played too many heavies, but look, the T-34 is actually one of the most profitable tanks. And that's because it has really high pen, so people aren't firing much gold, 
And so its ammo cost is low and it's doing good. So T-34, consistent money maker. Let's play a medium tank. Not the Mars because that is just a rare vehicle that lots of rich people bought. Let's play the 122 TM instead, which is a, a wide variety. A, a, a lot of people have this vehicle. So the 122 TM, is this a good tank? Yes, it is. I actually have some of my best stats in the game on this vehicle. I got a 78% win rate and I'm getting elite average experience. And that's because the 122 TM is, to all intents and purposes, a tier 9 premium tank. But it's down at tier 8 because it has awful damage per minute. And talk about awful damage per minute. Ooh, awful damage per minute against tier 8. This could be a little bit rough. Oh my goodness gracious. What are we going to do here? Okay, well I'm playing on Airfield, which is traditionally a very campy map. I usually only like playing this map and making my way up towards the north. Uh, however, I am not fast enough to make my way up towards the north. So we're going to instead have to just make my way towards the center. Maybe I can go up towards this ridge and see what I can do there. I think that might be a better idea. Um, I could also make my way towards the center of this bit, of this map. So I've got two builds for this tank. One is vert stabs, vents, and coated optics. It's like a consistency build. And the other build that I have for this vehicle, I drop all that and I go for vents and I go for a gun wrapper and a turbo for like an aggressive build for when I'm in those nice matchups or on those city maps. But this is definitely a map where I want to have the consistency. Now, I'm not using a gun rammer on this tank because the worst aspect of the vehicle is the reload. And honestly, there's not really too much difference between having like a 14 second and a 15 second reload on this tank. Um, when it comes at the expense of all of the other aspects of, of the vehicle, it doesn't have enough view range, so you have to use coated optics. And I feel like vents for me are going to outweigh the, uh, the benefit of, of the slight rate of fire increase. So I lost a good amount of hit points there, but we uh, have taken the position that I wanted to, which is this high ground. And luckily, we've managed to uh, get a shot in against the Skoda as well. So people preloading gold. Skoda spamming gold. Bosch spamming gold. Welcome to World of Gold. Uh, I fired a few gold rounds in my Skoda T56, though, so I can't really talk. Okay, so M60 in the middle. Scary tank. I'm just going to use my view range here. I'm accurate. I got great shell velocity. I got great pen on both my regular rounds with 233 and my premium rounds at 299. So I can just set up shop and just really just chill here and wait. Um, it's going to be a, a long-winded game from that regard. So what? why is this vehicle doing so well? Well, as I've said, it's basically like everything about the vehicle is tier 9 apart from its rate of fire. So when you've only got one aspect of the vehicle that's horrendous, such as this rate of fire, as long as you can avoid getting yourself into all-in situations, you can still do really well. And sometimes in World of Tanks, it's damage per minute isn't everything. It's more about the consistency of a vehicle. Damage per minute isn't everything? Who are you and what have you done with Uncle Scrubby Baby? Well, I tell you what I've done, I've done with Uncle Scrubby Baby is I've done away with my win ratio today, that's for sure. My gosh. Not really the win ratio for me, but maybe we can claw our way back into this game. I mean, we're only down by 3,000 hit points, right? There's only tier 8 tanks that are falling. Look at that Fosh B licking its lips. Licking its lips in anticipation of being able to take me down here. But that is not going to be the case, Mr. Fosh B. Not today. Hopefully. I mean, he already had, he already had his wicked way with his gold round on me as I was crossing to be able to take the high ground position. This high ground position hasn't really paid off so far. What if I should go back into that bush, try and use my coated optics, try and keep it going a little bit? Oh my word. But yeah, oh, today going out for a walk with Thor, it was the first time it's hot. If you don't know who Thor is, Thor, uh, Thor's a, a, a dog that me and Tanya got. He's five months old. Um, and it's his first hot day. And he was he was trying to find shade to say the least. He doesn't really like uh, the sun. And it's not even really that hot yet with this kind of like heat wave that we're about to have. It could get even more toasty, right? Even more toasty still. And he hasn't even developed his full coat yet. Poor thing. He's a golden retriever, so I can imagine it could get a little bit spicy for him. I'm going to have to look for ways of cooling him down. Maybe like a wet towel, maybe like a bucket of water. I don't really know. I don't exactly have a big garden where I can go and put some sprinkles on. 
talk about putting sprinklers on. We're going to have to cool the enemy's advances. They're making their way through over here. Luckily, we actually do a pretty good job there. And, oh man, I just love the consistency on this gun. It feels great. It feels more like a tier 10 medium tank gun within that regard. Just a shame that you have the world's worst damage per minute. Some armor to go to boot. What's this lever doing? Nice. I'm going to have to get some help here. Can I go any further back or do I die? Anyone got some damage per minute? How much further backwards can I go? Can I pretend like I'm going back? Oh my lord, the Skoda came and haunted me and the 122TM finished me off. Well, this looks like a little bit of a team difference. Look at our very brave tier 10 players at the back of the map. Great, wonderful, thank you so much. Gosh, I hate playing tier 8 tanks sometimes. I really do. I just feel like tier 8 is a complete loss inside World of Tanks. All right, so we played the best light tank with regards to profitability, two of the best heavies, the best medium. Now let's play the best tank destroyer. It's the Kari. And oh my goodness gracious. This is... I think... I think I want to go play Frontline, man. You know what? Just play Frontline. Don't play the random queue, at least today, because it's just not working out for me. These are the first bad games that I've had in a while, but we must give respect where respect is due. Uh, well played to that TS-54. It's a 50%, so he just played really aggressively. I'm number one on damage in the Basante, number two on experience, but I'm really unhappy. I should have won that game. I win those games. And today, it's just not quite right. All right, so now we're going to be playing in the Kari. This is a Japanese tank destroyer, and I guess the reason why this one's making so many credits is because it's just very good. It's got a really nice hard-hitting gun. It's got a structure that can be able to ricochet some shells. It's got enough gun depression, I believe. Is it 7 or is it 8 degrees? It's still fairly new. It's quite hard for me to keep tabs on absolutely everything. Um, although, I don't really play it because I end up finding this tank quite boring. I'm not going to lie. Um, I think it just does well because a lot of people want to chill at the back and snipe. But I personally find these, these Japanese tank destroyers really, really, really boring uh, to play. So I'm not really a big fan of them, if I am honest. Uh, one thing that's for sure is that the Kari is way better than the tier 8 tank tree Japanese tank destroyer. I say, okay, so we're going to use a turbo. We're going to go for vents and a gun rammer. We're going to go make our way south and see what we can be able to do. So this tank's got 2,200 DPM, 0.34 accuracy, which is actually really nice for such a large caliber gun. I think one of the reasons why this tank does so well is it hits very hard. But it also actually has pretty good camo for such a large tank. A lot of people don't realize that the Japanese TDs are actually quite well concealed. It's a bit bizarre. Especially the tier 9 and the tier 10 tech tree tank. Because those two vehicles can get 5% extra from one of the field mods. This one doesn't get the extra from the field mod. But it's still not awful. Talk about awful, man. That TVP, that is not the result that you want to be having. Another cool thing about this tank is because of the field mod. If you have an exceptional crew, you don't need to use coated optics on this tank. Vents is more than enough for that. Yeah, this tank's got 7 degrees of gun depression. It hits for 500. It's also got really good HE shells. 90 millimeters of pen and 630. So I can imagine a lot of people are just using those, those HE rounds as well. The 252 millimeters of standard pen, it's not really particularly wonderful, but it's also not awful. Um, the tank's gold as well, 298. Again, not great for a tier 8 TD, but definitely not bad for a tier 8 TD. Okay, I've got to be careful here. There are so many scary tanks like the Udes, the M48. I don't feel very safe pushing forwards, but you know what? What's the worst that could happen? Because today's just today's just awful anyway, you know? Today's going so badly that sometimes you just got to let the chips fall where they may. And if you get caught out, you get caught out. So let's get forwards, you know? Unlike my tier 10 tanks did in the previous game, and unlike my tier 10 tanks seem to want to do in this game. Let's get forwards and see if I can get a little bit sneaky. Maybe I can outspot this Ute. Nope, I definitely got spotted. You could tell as soon as he lurched his turret towards me. i got to be careful with the TDs at the back. That could be a G-Saw, could be a T-30. My Batchat 25T has already managed to lose his life, which is a little bit alarming. Seven degrees of gun depression doesn't really feel like enough to be able to use this position. And suddenly, suddenly I feel like I am not in the best of positions. But luckily, the Udez is actually below me now. And if the Udez is below me, what's this? I gotta push this guy. Alright, come on then. I'll take a shot for you. I'll take a shot for you. 
Ha, he doesn't want to overturn his tracks. Nice TVP. Nice TVP. Nice! There we go. That's how it's done. Tier 8 tank getting forwards with the TVP. I extend his hit points, and that's a tier 10 medium tank taken care of. Beautiful. Oh, this is so wonderful, man. After you've had a run of games like I did, where I lost like three in a row, and I have to deal with tier 10 tanks who just don't do anything, sometimes it's just like these little silver linings, you know? Where you actually have a TVP on your team who doesn't make you want to uh, quit the game. Oh, baby, there we go. A lot of people love to spam gold on this vehicle, not because the rounds have more pen, but because the rounds have 1,150 shell velocity. So it's the same on the tier 10. And the tier 9. Oh, I shouldn't have pushed here. I think this was a bit silly. The SU-100's just over there. Um, but you know what? If he's not shooting me, he's shooting my team, right? If he's firing standard rounds, he's actually going to be in a bit of a tricky scenario here. Because as long as I can use my gun depression, my armor's not the worst. There he is. Nice. This thing, when you think about it, it's basically like a more mobile Ferdinand. I think the only thing that I really don't enjoy about this vehicle is the hit points. If this thing had better hit points, it would just be insane. Probably should have fired a gold round there, but I didn't. All right, I should be able to reload at roughly the same time as him, even though this tank's damage per minute isn't the best. Do we get the kill? Yes, we don't. <laughs> well, at least my TPP friend gets the kill. What are the games today, dude? What are the games today? Just very one-sided affairs. Although, when I think about it, my game in the Shigoda T56 wasn't very one-sided, and my game in the Basante wasn't very one-sided, so um, I feel like I had the chance to be able to win those two battles. If maybe I'd done a little bit more. Just not my day entirely. I think I, I could have done better. Nevertheless, I hope this was a handy list of all of the most profitable tanks. So, I want to come to a summary. Now, you don't have to just buy these vehicles, okay? Look, if you go out and you buy every single one of these vehicles, results may vary, okay? Don't go out and buy these things and you think, oh, well, Quickie Baby has posted because of Tomato GG that I'm guaranteed to get 50,000 credits per game. It ain't gonna happen, possibly. It's because a lot of these tanks are actually meta tanks that a lot of the meta players play because they want to be able to grind their credits. And when meta players grind these tanks, they are going to be better, and that's why they're going to be making more credits at the same time. Now, there are some situations in the form of the PBR. That's because it gets good matchmaking, because it gets cheap ammunition, and because of the T-34, because it does get cheap ammo and high amounts of pen. So the conclusion that I want to come to is that the best tanks to be able to make credits in World of Tanks are the tanks that deal a lot of damage and don't have to spam a lot of gold. That is really how simple it is. And so if you want to get yourself playing um, vehicles that you make a lot of credits in, don't pick tanks that you're spamming gold in. Don't pick tanks where you're not doing a lot of damage. Find your tank where you do the most damage, and you don't have to spam gold, and then you're going to make a lot of profit. Like, look at that. The Skoda... Well, the Skoda T T50 who killed me in my 122 TM. I actually ended up making, even if we were to take the 65k away from that game, we still make 40,000 credits profit in the 122 TM. Why? Because we didn't spam any gold. And we finished number one in experience and number two on damage, even in a tier 10 matchup. And that is why the 122 TM is just so good. Because it's so consistent. You get yourself into the worst possible matchup, you feel like you have a chance. You get yourself into the best possible matchup, you feel like you've really got yourself a chance. A very underrated tank. In our car regame here, we're right middle and middle, and we make ourselves 40,000 credits profit. Very consistent. The final elephant in the room that I want to address is, why is it all tier 8 tanks that are making big profit and not tier 9? If I go to tier 9, you can see that the WZ120 GFT is making 38,000 credits per game, the TL7 36,000 credits per game. And I think the real thing that's eating into the profitability of these tier 9 tanks is how much they cost to repair. The average repair cost in the WZ114, for example, is 21,000. The Chieftain, 17. The STRVK, 17. And when we take a look at what it was like for the tier 8s, none of the tier 8 tanks are costing more than 7,000 credits. And so, if you are playing a tier 9 premium tank, keep in mind 
that your tank getting wrecked can actually end up costing you quite a lot. On the other hand, if you are an incredibly good player, you might actually find yourself making as many, if not more credits in tier 9 if you're not always getting your tank destroyed, and especially if you're running a credit booster. And remember, those tier 9 premiums are also making bonds. And for me, tier 9 is so much more enjoyable than tier 8. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for the most profitable tanks today. Really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know if you're surprised by any of the tanks on this list. And what is your go-to tank for making profit inside World of Tanks? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic. And if you want to go and take a look at the statistics yourself, you can find them on Tomato GG. Just go to the tank economics section. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.